Schools are killing creativity today. When have you ever seen schools promote art and music before math, science, and English? In fact, the word education originally comes from its Latin root, which means to bring out. Therefore, why do we always think education should be about push it in? Today I'm going to propose something totally out of whack. We should implement coding in our school curriculum. Just like art and music can be a way to express creativity, coding can be a highly fun and engaging activity for kids to take part in. Well, what is coding? Well, to understand what coding is, we have to understand what code is. Code is just program instructions, and programs are everyday things we use in life, like Microsoft Word, Facebook, and yes, Tinder. So, coding is just the process of assigning code where the purpose is a classification or identification. Heck, that is just fancy talk for actually making a computer program. Oh, so I get it now. We should do this because it's a new trend. If we don't program, we'll be programmed. Plus I, plus, I can't wait to put Harvard dropout startup CEO on my resume. <laughs> Sorry, but no. In fact, mimicking the path of the latest billionaire is a terrible way just to chase success. So why should we all learn coding? Let me tell you a story. A math teacher is giving a lesson on conic functions and is asked by a student, when will I ever need to know this? Most likely never, replied the teacher, without hesitation. Most jobs, and even a lot of professions, will require you to know any math beyond a little algebra. But, the teacher continued, let me ask you this. Why do people go to the gym and lift weights every day? Do they plan on becoming Olympic weightlifters or professional bodybuilders like my fellow friend Truett? Do they think they'll one day find a little old lady trapped under a 300 pound barbell and say, this is what I've been training for? No. They lift weights because it makes them stronger. Learning coding is important because it makes you smarter. It focuses your brain to think in a way that it normally wouldn't. A way that requires precision, discipline, and abstract thought. It's more than just rote memorization are making beautiful things. So, let me ask you again. Why should we all learn coding? Coding helps with problem solving skills. When you try making a code, sometimes it doesn't work. But if you keep trying over and over again, you will eventually get it. It challenges people to think and be creative to work around the problem. It also combines art and music, two things you'll use in everyday life to express yourself. Don't, and many of you think that coding is just some sort of engineering. I like to think of it as a craft. Don't all artists use some sort of tool, form of tool to create their art, be it a paintbrush and a canvas or a marble and a mallet? Just like them, artistic software developers can use code to beautifully generate their art. And think about it. Don't all art and music follow some sort of structure to a degree? I mean, pleasant color combinations can be mathematically defined in terms of spectrum, and Music has mathematical rules to make sure the chords sound pleasant to the ear. And many uh, music makers, like Skrillex, Diplo, and me, including, all make their music with code. So you see, coding is not much different than art or music. Now, do you really have to learn a code to participate in the 21st century? 
Absolutely not. You can be as analog as you want in your life and still put food on the table. But this is more than about personal lifestyle choices. We are all now immersed in code. And in not in itself, than the effect it has around us. Every time you switch on a computer, a mobile phone, a calculator, even a microwave, code is being run. Quite simply, the world runs on code. And don't you want to know what's inside that device you use every single day of your life? Drones delivering packages to your doorstep, self-driven cars, 3D printers, they were all some sort of sci-fi or fantasy 10 years ago, which is now a reality. I'm not saying that we need to churn out a nation of programmers and engineers. I'm not saying that we need to do this to become the next Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates. I'm saying we should do this because it will help you later on in your life. Now, how did I get so interested in coding. This is me, by the way, at a young age. I know, I'm beautiful. You don't even have to say it. <laughs> it all started in second grade. We have this guest who was mm, fourth grade at the time and showed us this program called Scratch. It was where we had little blocks. And with those little blocks, we would make big blocks to make full-fledged programs. And we got to make our own animations. My mind was a bit twisted back then, so I made an animation of a shark trying to eat a cute fish. I didn't stop there, however. I went the full mileage, and whenever I could, I did scratch. Then, I started doing it out of school and made full-fledged games. I had this power to control what was on the screen in front of me, and I absolutely loved it. Scratch was a dream come true. So, one year later, I was on Khan Academy, which is a site to help kids study for big tests or academic skills. I was browsing through the math section, and I saw computer programming. I'm like, wow, Khan Academy at Scratch? I thought they would teach me how to use Scratch. I was wrong. Instead of the blocks I was used to, it was just cold, hard text, and I was aghast by the complexity. It was just like learning English and grammar all over again. I didn't stop there, though. I watched all the videos, made tons of programs, and felt greater power than before. Scratch was just limited to the people who made Scratch aloud. But with actual coding, I could make way cooler stuff than before. So, in the text-based program, you would program with a term called a language. It's just, like war, it's just like Spanish, English, or French, but meant for computers. I learned as much as I could. Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Python, HTML, and CSS. Java and JavaScript are two different things. Don't ask me why. OK, you could ask me why, but that's not the point. When I got older, I started taking online courses that boosted my learning experience. A few months ago, I was begging my dad to buy me a $1,800 Mac just so I could code iOS programs. Now, you don't have to buy a Mac to code every other language, believe me. But I wanted to code in Swift, which is another language, so I had to buy a Mac. Curse you, Apple. But when is the best time to start learning coding? The earlier, the better. OK, not that early. But just like young brains can learn a language faster and easier, it works the same exact way for computer language. And, sorry, uh, and wouldn't you rather not pay a hefty price for new courses every month? Wouldn't you rather just learn it right in your school where it's taught systematically step by step and everybody has access to it? Now, the biggest problem to overcome learning to code is what I call NMP, not my problem. It's for other people too because I am way above all of this nonsense.
or it's for other people to do because it's too dang difficult for me to understand. Frankly, it's not rocket science, although you do code in rocket science. It does take some effort, but it's only a matter of time. People all around the world are trying to accomplish this. There's a time every year called an hour of code. It is where you and anybody else in the world can learn coding for just one hour. In fact, last year, there were 37 million participants. And many people around the world have been impacted by this. In Estonia, a country in Europe, they have added school um, coding to their school curriculum. And many other countries in Europe have joined in on the fun. And believe me when I say it is fun. But in order to make this dream come true here in the United States of America, it will take serious work. There's roughly 100,000 public schools, several thousand private schools, with 3.5 million full-time teachers. But only a handful can teach coding. However, if Estonia can do it, why can't we? Parents, tell your local schools to make coding a subject. Students, nag your parents 24-7 to make them tell your school. <laughs> Teachers, start teaching it. Only one out of 10 schools teach kids to code. But let's make that 10 out of 10. Steve Jobs once said, you can't connect the dots looking forward but you can only connect them looking backwards. He was referring to how he took calligraphy in college, which helped him design beautiful fonts on the Mac. However, did he know he was going to use calligraphy later on in, in his life, much less design the first ever Mac, which, by the way, Microsoft copied? <laughs> no, but what I am trying to imply is that even if you feel that coding won't help you today, it will one day later on in your life. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. After all, if math, science, English, art, and music are supposed to help you in the future, then why not coding be a subject if it's supposed to help you in the future? So come on, friends. Let's exploit the creativity children have and change the world.